we can now look at uh, the free energy of systems when they are not at equilibrium. Uh, this equation, our free energy is equal to the standard free energy plus RT log of Q. Q is the quotient, uh, reaction quotient, has the same form as our equilibrium constant, uh, but it's not at equilibrium. If we look at this equation at equilibrium, our delta G is zero at equilibrium, and then the reaction quotient is equal to the equilibrium constant. We put in zero, we can solve this, and we end up with delta G, delta G naught equals minus RT log of the equilibrium constant. And when we use this, R is going to be the 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin. Um, or we can also just convert that to 8.3145 times 10 to the minus 3 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. Because we'll often be converting between joules and kilojoules in our calculations. So the equilibrium constant will be equal to E raised up to the power of minus delta G naught over RT. So using this first, and then we'll go and use this one. Um, if we have an equilibrium constant, so we have a reaction with the equilibrium constant 0.25 at 1100 Kelvin, what is our delta G naught? So we have our equilibrium constant, we have temperature, we put it into the minus RT times log of K, and um, in this case, I'm using the 8.345, 8.3145 times 10 to the minus 3 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. The no delta G prefers to be in kilojoules. So when we use this, we end up with 12.7 kilojoules per mole. So we have a positive uh, delta G naught. That means we have an equilibrium constant that is less than the one. Another one going the other direction here, we have a acid base uh, acid dissociation reaction we have our delta g naught is 55.9 kilojoules at 25 celsius as our equilibrium constant so we want our units to match between delta g naught and r so in this case i turn the delta g naught into joules so we have our negative 65, 900 joules over 8.3145 and 298 Kelvin. Uh, that gives us a value of negative 22.6. So E raised up the power of 22, negative 22.6 gives us a K of 1.59 times 10 to the minus 10. So again, a positive delta G naught gives a very tiny equilibrium constant. But now if we have uh, actual pressures or concentrations of reaction, we can use this to figure out what our uh, delta G is. So the delta G naught will tell us how big or small the equilibrium constant is. The delta G will tell us what side of the equilibrium we're on, so whether we're going forward to reach equilibrium or going backwards to reach equilibrium. So in the born harbor process of uh, uh, the process of turning uh, nitrogen and hydrogen into ammonia, we have um, pressures associated with each of, of those, and we're having our delta H reaction and delta S reaction to ask what our free energy is at 298. So, first, we want to calculate our delta G naught. So, we're going to have to delta G, we need our delta G naught. So, that's uh, delta H minus T delta S. We put in our values, we end up with the delta G of a minus 3.27 times 10 to the fourth joules. So we have a, a negative delta G, we know this reaction is going to lie to the products having a large equilibrium constant. So we're going to calculate our Q, the next part that we need on the equation here. So we set the ratio, our pressure of the ammonia squared divided by the pressure of nitrogen and the pressure of hydrogen cubed. 
we put in our numerical values, we end up with a small Q of 9.27, 9.26 times 10 minus 7. So now we're going to calculate our delta G. We put in our uh, delta G naught, RT log of the Q, and we process it down, we end up with a minus 67.1 kilojoules. So it's a negative, so we know the reaction is going to go forward. This doesn't tell us how fast it will go forward, uh, if it's uh, kinetically favored or not. But we know it's thermodynamically favored, it will go forward if possible. Let's take a look at another one. So another reaction, uh, nitric oxide plus ozone gives us nitrogen dioxide plus oxygen. We're given the pressure of each of the gases and the free energy formation of each of the gases. And that's what our free energy is. So we want to calculate our delta G naught. So this is going to be the um, free energy of the products minus the free energy reactants all times their coefficients. In this case, all the coefficients are one. So it'll be our product plus product minus reactant minus reactant. We end up with a delta G naught of a negative 198 kilojoules. So we know that the equilibrium lies to the right. We calculate our reaction quotient. We set up a product over reactants, but in the uh, the pressures, and we end up with a Q of 50. So we're ready to calculate our delta G. We put in our values of uh, delta G naught, R. In this case, I use a version of R with kilojoules. So I know the answer is going to be in kilojoules. Uh, as we went through our calculator, we end up with negative 188 kilojoules. So we know that the equilibrium lies far to the right, but we are not there yet. So we have going to go in the forward direction to approach equilibrium.